Hello, I'm Sean from Big Rep, and welcome to our first episode. My voice just cracked. It's like I'm in puberty. <laughs> Hey, How are you, hi. Marco? We're good. Thanks, good. Sean. So today we're going to talk a little bit about moving from desktop to industrial additive manufacturing and what goes into uh, designing industrial parts that's different from desktop parts. Right. So today I would say we just start a bit with the basics, right? One of the first points maybe I will touch, it's probably how to um, save as much post-processing, right? This part has been designed for FDM. Uh, it's a fixture for a car to just place, you know, the logo of the car in position. It's just mm -hmm. uh, to show a user case. Um, and you can see like how the details have been optimized, again, for FDM, right? You tend to not have a standard handle that you would have had if this one was, I don't know, injection molded. You probably would have had a handle of 90 degree straight up, 90 degree, like a standard angle, uh, handle. But if you don't need to have that strong gripping and you can you know, redesigning it, redesign it a bit for FDM, like twisting this angle, which still you have the grip enough to hold the fixture in place on the car, mm -hmm. but you save all the printing time of the support and the post-processing, and also here inside this angle, you see there is a little gap, which is still rounded, and this doesn't allow, it allows you to remove basically all the support. In this case, of course, still you had some support in between the gaps where the letters go. You cannot really avoid that because it needs to stop the part in that specific position. But again, you can, of course, uh, remove as much support as possible, but sometimes it's necessary. And you have to keep it. it. So we know that it's important to minimize post-processing and to reduce the amount of supports that you're using. But how do you do that when you need to print an object that has, let's say, large overhangs? If you consider the overhang, sometimes you can use it to actually reduce the amount of support, right? First of all, you need to know what's the overhang uh, uh, angle maximum of the material you're using. Uh, there are some material that actually push the limits kind of a lot, like uh, uh, our high temp, for example, material, uh, which has an overhang of 60 degree, which compared with 45 degree of PLA, it's already much more. And it allows you to have, you know, like much more inclined angles without using any support. And that's already, uh, you know, a big benefit. And on the other hand, uh, I will use this one as an example. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, like little details can really affect uh, the, the amount of uh, post-process you have to do removing support. Okay, consider desktop printers, right? You have a small printer. If you have a certain amount of support, let's say uh, it's a 100 gram print, and then you have 20% of it, it's uh, support, then you have, what, 20 grams of support. But when we go in a one cubic meter printers and you're printing something that is 10 kilos, then 20% of 10 kilos is much It becomes more, a right? lot more support material used. So it's a lot of support that you want to save, first to save the printing time, but second also the amount of material you uh, waste, let's say, because in this case we're talking about breaking down support. Um, so little details like, let's say, this object of course has been printed like this, right? It's mm -hmm. pretty clear, so uh, it doesn't have much support or no support at all. But let's assume for some reason this part would have been printed like that. And this part would have been one meter high, mm -hmm. right? You would have have support just for this surface all the way up to one meter just to hold this little surface. Now, if it's necessary to have the surface like that, well, of course, go ahead, you cannot change it. but. If you're designing it for FDM, doing a charm thing, right? So charm fairing this, this angle here, this surface. So what basically, charm fairing is just a simple command that is in you know, the CAD design software, which basically change uh, a 90 degree angle, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, like in this case, from this surface to this surface bottom here, it's a 90 degree difference. And if you select this edge and you do this charm thing, and then you give um, the right distance, which is probably this this distance inside, it will convert this uh, 90 degree surface to a 45 degree surface. Now, as I said, for for example, for high temp, you can go also go, uh, being the overhang 60, we can also go 30 degree, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not flat, it's a bit inclined, but this will make sure that all the support from bottom until there, it will be saved. Even with a, a PLA material? With PLA, in that case, you should have at least 45 degree, mm -hmm. right? With high temp, you can go 30 degree. So it's closer to having a flat surface, a bit mm. inclined.
but if it doesn't affect your the function of your part, right? Let's say in this case, for example, it needs to fit inside, mm -hmm. right? But having an angle here, it will still make sure that the part locks itself. So it will still work, but in the same time, you will have saved this amount of time, right? And we're talking about one meter high. Yeah. So it starts being Becomes a lot of support, right? Yes, exactly. Thanks for watching this episode of Big Rep Academy. Be sure to subscribe to see all the new videos we release and get all the design tips you need for industrial large format additive manufacturing.